face comes into us, this side's rotating back. So the back of the left side's open, the front of the right side pops forward, keeping that sternum up, and that's gonna make us more effective in producing force with the pluck side hand. My name's Greg Chaplin, I'm a physical therapist and strength conditioning specialist. I also happen to play a bit of bass, and in this video we're gonna talk all about standing position for upright bass, and why my recommendations are probably gonna be a little bit different than what you learned in your training. So, why would we wanna change this position in the first place? So the typical position that you get into when you play upright bass, when you first start to learn, or as you start playing, kinda of what you tend to fall into, is a position where this right foot is behind the left, and we have a little bit of turn coming this way. Now the reason why this is important is because we all have a tendency to get towards this kind of position just because of how we're built as humans. If you're not familiar with this concept, check out more of the channel. We discuss this in many other videos, uh, so go check those out. So if we do this repetitively over time, we can start to break down in certain areas leading to pain and dysfunction. And of course, since when we're playing an instrument, we're sustaining positions, for long periods of time, we wanna avoid anything that's gonna get us stuck in one position. So to review what's going on in the body, I'm gonna take out the pelvis and the rib cage right now and just kinda of illustrate what this position looks like. We'll go through the whole chain all the way up and then we'll discuss what my fix is gonna be for this and kinda of what's happening uh, from the ground up there as well. So when we're standing with the right behind the left foot kind of orientation, what ends up happening is that we get this pointing of the entire body and this turning of the entire body towards the right. And so that's gonna start to look a little bit like this. And again, the reason this is important isn't because this is necessarily bad, but just if we get stuck here, that can lead to pain and breakdown over time. So now looking into the rib cage, if we turn the spine to the right, that exaggerates that right rib hump that we'll see in like a scoliosis and that left rib flare. And again, we know if that gets out of hand, that can also lead to issues as well. With this turn, what we end up getting is we get a push from the back of the left. So this space between the shoulder blade and the spine on the left side gets compressed. That can lead to shoulder and neck issues, especially on that left side. And then as that turn happens, this sternum on the right is actually gonna start to depress and and that's gonna rob us of the ability to effectively create the force we need on this side of the body to pluck the note. So now what's the solution? The solution is gonna start at the ground, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually put the right foot in front of the left. And so we're gonna actually do this little weight shifting type activity to get the feel of this, but as we put the weight onto that right foot, we're gonna pick up the inside of that right foot and do a little bit of a push. That push is gonna help us turn through the hips and push back into the left so that we can feel the left heel more prominently. In this position, this pelvis is now, instead of facing into this rightward orientation, it's rotating back into this leftward orientation. We're just gonna keep this whole back left side opened up, so you're gonna position that left shoulder blade in a nice position. So if we go up into the rib cage, as we push back here, we're going to, now instead of getting this right turn, we're gonna get a little bit of a left turn. So we're gonna have a little more surface area for that rib cage uh, to house that shoulder blade on this side, which is gonna be kind of nice, okay? And this sternum on the right side is actually also gonna stay up as a result. So it's gonna look a little bit like this. Base comes into us, this side's rotating back, so the back of the left side's open, the front of the right side pops forward, keeping that sternum up, and that's gonna make us more effective in producing force with the pluck side hand, okay? One more thing to think about. So when we get the base here, instead of coming to the base, which we're gonna be likely to do if we set up in, in this sort of a, a stance where we're pushing that left side forward, when we go left foot behind right foot, and we use that right foot to kind of push back and rotate back into the left, we actually can then accept the base into the side here instead of going to it. And again, that allows us to stay expanded on the back of the left side. That sets this left arm up for success. Now, one last thing is the left arm, instead of being at this traditional shoulder height, we're gonna bring it down a little bit. Keeping that elbow below shoulder level is actually gonna allow us to keep this backside a little bit more open. And that's gonna help us reinforce that turn back to that direction, that's gonna keep that right side in a good position to be open as well in the front, and that's gonna give us that effective force production on the right side. The other position would be something like this. My 
position is going to be a little bit more like this. Right foot in front of left, pushing with the right to go back into the left, little turn through the pelvis, let the instrument come into you, elbow below shoulder height, front side on the right side open. <laughs> So there you have it. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment. I'll make sure to follow up in future videos. And thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time. Peace.